All right, let's welcome in our guest, the young legend, Tyler Hero. Tyler, what's good, man? How you doing? Thanks for thanks for having me on. Uh, our listeners, by the way, have been asking for you for months now, so we're we're very excited. I know the listeners are excited to hear from you too. Yeah, yeah I'm ready. Let's do it. Um, you just had probably the longest rookie season in NBA history. Actually, it had to have been the longest rookie season in NBA history because you started training camp last October and you finished the NBA Finals in October. Right. right. Um, <laughs> what what ha, what have the last two months looked like for you? I know judging through um, your Instagram feed, it looked like you spent some time in Turks and Caicos on vacation, uh, but I know yes. you're a gym rat. So what has the last two months looked like in, in sort of preparation for uh, what's coming up? Uh, yeah, I took a couple of days off. Well, I took like a week off, but I went home, saw my parents, uh, my brothers. Then I did go to Turks for for a week. And then once I got back from there, I just got back to work. And, uh, you know, ever since then, just trying to get back and getting ready for the season, gearing up, you know, starting soon. When did the when did the tattoo happen? Uh, right when quarantine uh, happened, actually, like right when the season shut down. Okay, so this you had this in the bubble. You had this yeah. in the bubble. Yeah. And it's it's no work, no check. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Right. Uh, from from someone who has a sleeve tattoo. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to co-sign this one, Tommy. I'm going to co-sign <laughs> this one. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> wait, wait. Speaking of tattoos, we have to ask this. Tyler, uh, Duncan has – Duncan uh, is one of our correspondents on the show, and he came on the show and asked JJ whether he should get a sleeve. Yeah, he he was talking about it. Yeah, I think bubble. he has not gotten. What is your feeling on this? Um, I would love to see Duncan with the sleeve. Like, why not? I think it would be good. I think Duncan <laughs> needs to to step up just his overall sort of um, vibe. You know what I mean by that? Like he's he he's got this vibe of like being this really nice kind of dorky kid. I'm not knocking him, <laughs> but I yeah. think that's the general perception of him. He needs to just like. He needs to get a little bit more street cred, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. I feel, I tell him that all the time. Like, I think it was the game in the bubble he hit, like, eight threes. I'm like, he didn't post anything or say anything to anybody. I'm like, do something, bro. Like, build your brand a little bit. Like, you're, you're, like, you're good. <laughs> I think this is, this is actually a, an interesting point to make, though, because I do feel like you guys are not necessarily similar players, but – uh, you both had, you know, breakout seasons this year mm. and from the outside and knowing Duncan a little bit, it seems like you guys are a little bit of a polar opposites. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we're really cool on the court and when we see each other, like we're, we're really cool. We will hang out off the court, but, um, we definitely have go our separate ways. Um, we are interested in different things I would say, but I mean, we are cool. And, you know, we have a great relationship and, you know, we've been playing together ever since I got drafted and in, into the summer league and ever since. So, you know, it's been good and really fun to play with him. Who, who wins in a shooting contest? Uh, it depends on the day. I mean, if we're just, you know, catch and shoot spot up, we're pretty even, but he's, he's like you, when you can start running off screens, I, I still got to get better at that. <laughs> Your 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 skill set though is is very unique. I feel like for uh, someone who just came in the league um, and only played one year of college basketball. I, I read this and I've heard this just from talking to different people. You started working with like a, a trainer, right? Uh, pretty early on in high school, you had somebody working you out when yeah. you were pretty young. When did when did that start? Uh, I would say. Like, I was always in the gym, but, like, I really focused and, like, you know, got into my skills and started working on, you know, my craft probably my freshman freshman years when I started to take it, like, really serious. I know with uh, with Joel, I, so Winhurst wrote an article about you during the finals, and I know with Joel this was sort of the same way, but he said something, I think it was either your high school coach or, or somebody that you worked with in high school, um, you know, you, you can do a move or learn a move and within mm -hmm. two or three reps, you're able to do that at game speed. Uh, yeah. Joel was the same way. There's not many guys that are like this. And I, we, we've talked about this, Tommy, a, a bunch on the show, but it seems like uh, the, the young players coming into the league now are light years ahead of where my generation was 
uh, mm-hmm. in terms of those skills, in terms of those, uh, you know, the dribble skills, the the footwork. Uh, the the yeah. video went viral the other day of you you doing the the Chris Paul spin fadeaway. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so what, right. what 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 is it about uh, these things that just make it easy easy for you to learn? Um, I don't know. I think just attention to detail and just like really just honing in on the the little things and. Um, I just love learning and being able to, you know, pick up on things quick, like you said. Um, I think that's important to to any any young player, any player that's, you know, trying to get better. Just the pick, the faster you can pick up on things is, you know, probably very important. You know, you want to be able to to pick up on things and apply it to your game and, you know, get better fast. Who did you model your game uh, when you were growing up after? Uh. You know, I watched like LeBron, and then once I got older, um, when Devin Booker went to Kentucky, that's when I really started to watch him, and I love his game. People have made that comp. I think people on the show have made that comparison between the two of you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's a good comp. I actually do. Is that I, I was going to ask you about like how you view yourself, like not to put a ceiling on your own career or anything like right. that, but. <laughs> I assume you have sort of goals in terms of being an all-star or all NBA yeah. or those sort of things. So right. is that sort of, is that sort of your vision of a ceiling is like being a Devin Booker level player? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely want to be like one of them, like an all-star. I mean, I, I dream of, you know, things like that, but you know, I, like I said, I, I love his game, the way he gets to his spots and, you know, he can score with the best of them. And um, yeah, I just think he's so fluid and skilled. You know, he can just really score the ball. But I think we're, we're our bodies are different because I got short arms, like really short arms. So <laughs> so my body's a little different than his. But. You and me both, pal. You and me both. <laughs> this, may come, this, this may come across as a very weird question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. And right. this goes back to, um, to <laughs> something Jimmy Butler said when he came on our podcast in March. He said, Tyler thinks he's black. Um, <laughs> and he legitimately thinks he's black. And I'm sure at some point in your life, over the last, let's call it five years, six years, however long, you've sort of been a household high school name, a, a college basketball uh, big name, and now an NBA player. Someone has compared you to a white player. Of does course, it, yeah. But does it bother you to be compared to a white player? <laughs> Um, I mean, not not necessarily. Like some white players are good, and it's okay to be able to compare to them. Like, but I mean, like some some are just not realistic. Like some will just say you play like him because, and it's like, are you just saying that because he's white, or are you actually watching the game? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I I've seen in some comments that there has been uh, a br- very brief comparison. Let's say like Tyler Hero to me, right? Yeah. Um, we're both white. We're both around six four, six five. We both have the aforementioned alligator arms. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we both can shoot the basketball. But I think mm-hmm. real I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, realistically, uh, you know, that for me at least, that's where the comparison ends. So it would not offend me if you said <laughs> that you were upset if people said oh, this guy plays like JJ Reddick. <laughs> no, I would, I definitely would not be upset with that comparison. Like I'm definitely not upset with that. That's that's great, man. Tyler, when in when in your life um was it like middle school, high school, when in your life did you get the swag? Did you just like wake up one day and you were like <laughs> you like you just like looked outside and you're like this is different? Nah, nah. Um I think I don't know. I feel like I've always, I've always, I've always been like who I am. This is me. <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's. For, listen, from the outside, at least from the outside, I feel like you are one of the players that I'm extremely jealous of, because, <laughs> like, whatever anxieties I have about putting myself out there and put posting stuff on social media, like you just don't give a fuck. You know, like, and you're you're out there, and I. This is a compliment, man. You're out there living your best life, and it's it's I mean, beautiful to watch. It's beautiful to watch. I appreciate that, but I mean, I don't know. It's not that I don't care. It's just like, for me, the work always comes first. So, like, 
you're taking care of the business and you're doing, you know, your work and you're still focused and doing, you know, taking care of things that really matter, you know, family, the game, you know, everything else just comes with it. And um, just, I guess I take what comes with it. <laughs> JJ, don't you think, Tyler, we've been accused many times of being like a heat fanboy podcast on the, of <laughs> doing this show. But don't you think some of that mentality is your whole team? And you have guys, yeah. I mean, like, obviously Jimmy is, you know, like, we know well and he's been on the show or whatever. Jimmy's like that in his own way. Duncan's like that in his own way. Right. You have all these different people that, uh, you know, that not everyone is exactly the same, but, like, part of your run this last year it wasn't just that you guys were winning. It was, like, you were winning in kind of, like, a fun way where you yeah. were kind of, like, lighting people up. And it was, right. it was like, even, even when you got down, we sort of knew you were coming back at some point and there's nothing they could really do about it. Yeah, I think we had like a, like you said, we all have different personalities and we all have different ways of showing our whatever it may be. Um, But I feel like we just had a great group of guys that just, you know, meshed well together, really, really got along, you know, throughout the locker room, off the court, we were really close. And then on the court, it just showed, you know, we all played for one another. And it was for being a young guy, you know, coming into the league, you don't, you hear so much about, you know, the vets, some vets aren't good, you know, but for me, I got, you know, a great, great mix of, you know, vets and, and younger players, and we all really mesh well together. So it was a great first season. Tommy, this is the uh, this is the first episode in about four or five episodes that we have mentioned the Miami Heat. We were accused <laughs> over the course of about two months of being Heat homers. I don't know where this comes from. We were accused of being a Miami Heat podcast at one point because we talked about the Heat so much. Wow. Um, I do, I do. to Tommy's point, I do feel like it is such a uh, unique group of guys, a unique unique mix of players uh, in that everybody has like just this insane work, work ethic on their own. Right. And I'm wondering in your case where that come from. And you, you said earlier, you know, you, you've always been that way. But that that had to have come from somewhere. That come from your parents. That come from a uh, somebody you grew up with. Uh, yeah. Where did where did that come from? Um, definitely from my parents. You know, my dad always had me. You know, working hard, whether it was basketball or not. It was you know you're gonna work hard. Um, but I would say when I really like basketball wise, like like I said, I started taking it serious freshman year, sophomore year got more intense each year but like junior year when i didn't senior year when i didn't make the mcdonald's all-american game that like hurt me the most that was like that was like the thing that hurt me in high school i was i was sick so i ever since i didn't make it that that in that game i went to the gym at like 5 6 a.m every morning until until i got drafted did jimmy make you go to the gym with him at 4 a.m ever uh 5 a.m was the earliest we got. We woke up at five and we went to the beach. We're throwing medicine balls around on the beach. I'm like five in the morning. <laughs> I actually think. I actually think I remember that post that he put up of you guys. You guys yeah. were like on like a, a yeah sand sand volleyball court or something like that. Yeah. How yeah. how important how important was he, him for you this year? Because it seemed like he took you under his wing from the jump from the get go. Yeah. Like he he reached out to you and and kind of took you under his wing. Yeah. Um, well, how it went down, I actually reached out to him when when they, we signed him or traded for him, and then I just you know hit him up and just told him I'm willing to work with him whenever I, you know I want to get some work in and get better. And he was like, Yeah, come down to Chicago and we'll 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 work. So I came down there and that's when we work woke up at five and was we we're on the beach throwing uh, medicine balls around, but. I, I leaned on him so much my rookie year, you know, just being able to lean on someone like him who's who's seen everything, who's been through it all, um, you know. And then we built such a great relationship. And for being a young guy, for me, it was just in the playoffs, I was, you know, just trying to play for him. And I know he's always been that guy that people talk about as a bad teammate and stuff. But that's like the complete opposite of who he actually is. So um, just just being able to play with him my rookie year was, was a blessing. I think after this year, Jimmy Butler has been redeemed as a teammate. Right. He's been redeemed. He <laughs> yeah, is a good yes. teammate. Um, yeah. Do, can you describe, because I, I played with him obviously in, in Philly, but can you describe him as a teammate and what he's like just being around him on a daily basis? 
Uh, as a teammate, um, I mean, he's going to come into the gym and he's going to joke, smile, laugh, do all the – do it. he's just a great guy. You know, he's, he's that guy that you would want to lead your team. You know, he's a leader. People will follow him. Um, he always leads in the right direction. And, um, you know, he's a worker and he wants to win. So that's why the Heat and, and Jimmy get along so well, just because they want to win and he wants to win and we put a really good team together. I feel like we got to see the real Jimmy this year. Like when we, Tommy, we talked about this back in March with him. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't feel like I got to know the real Jimmy as a teammate. I got to know the real Jimmy as a person off the court, but as a teammate, I didn't right. get to see the real Jimmy because he was so he was so unhappy. It just it, yeah. he, he wasn't happy. You could see it on his face. And right. that was that that was kind of disappointing for me then to go see him go to Miami <laughs> <laughs> and make it and, work and blossom, you know? It was it right. was a little frustrating for me. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> like you could have did this in Philly. Yeah, come on, man. Come on. It wasn't I mean, it, I guess it wasn't the right mix of guys, but um you know, I, I obviously I've I've talked with him a bunch after the season. I, I love that dude. He's uh I'm, yeah. I'm always pulling for him. Yeah, for sure. Tyler, do you do the um like the chip on your shoulder thing? Like, do you remember the teams that draft that that uh, picked people ahead of you and stuff like that? And do you do make a mental note, or are you kind of like I don't care, just like, it is what it is? Um, a, a mix of both. Like, I I see the players that they drafted ahead of me for sure, and I think about it when I play against them. But um, it's not something that I dwell on. Like, I'm I'm definitely okay with being in Miami at thirteen at the thirteenth pick. Um, I feel like I got it blessed into the right spot. We were we were talking earlier just about the the, the confidence. Your your um, your confidence clearly stems from just <laughs> your your personality, but also the work you put in. You know, it, mm. it's clear that you believe in preparation, and you believe that the work equals results, and the work equals confidence. Um, where do the stones come from, though? Where does where do the stones come from for a nineteen or a twenty year old to drop thirty seven in a playoff game or to go six for eighteen for most of a finals game and then kill down the stretch? There's there that that goes to me that goes beyond confidence and that goes towards not being afraid of the moment when most people would shy away. Yeah, um, I think just being not you said it like just not being afraid of the moment. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's just basketball and we all love it and we all just play it to, because we love it and we, you know, it brings joy to us. So I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, make or miss, everyone, you know, everyone gets an opportunity and um, I just try to make the most of every, every opportunity, every every big shot, every every big game, I try to make the most out of it. When do you think the I was looking at your uh, game log earlier today, and like everyone knows, everyone who follows sports overall knows you and what sort of what you're capable of, especially in the fourth quarter after the bubble and after the playoffs this year. But mm-hmm. you were doing that from kind of like the jump down there, and I don't think a lot of people were necessarily paying attention because it was like you'd go like three games where you'd score like two points, and then you would have a game where you'd score twenty five and you'd hit like like three threes in the fourth quarter or something like that. When do you think yeah. the Heat were like, okay, we actually can trust him in the fourth quarter? Um, I would say about halfway through the, the bubble when we were playing those uh, regular season games uh, in the bubble. Because uh, I think Jimmy and Gorn actually went down or took some time off to get ready for the playoffs. So I ended up starting those for like two or three games. And I think I had like played the Suns and I had like 25, 10, and 8. And then we played OKC the next game, and I had like 31. And then from there on out, they kind of just trusted me, I guess. <laughs> Do you? We we've talked about this a little bit with with Duncan, and I've experienced this in my own life. But in the fourth quarter of games, did you feel like because you're white with short arms, <laughs> teams teams would target you defensively? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, me and Duncan know at this point, like, going into the game, they're coming at us no matter what. If we could be playing the best defense in the world, they're still going to come at us. I feel like at times it's like I've, I've gotten fucking five out of six stops, and I know they're going to just <laughs> – they're going to manipulate a ball screen, so I got to guard their best player. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how, that's how it is. Oh, man. 
it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's hilarious. Some things about the holiday season never change, even when everything around us is. So when your small business needs to ramp up for the new year, LinkedIn Jobs is ready to help. That's because LinkedIn Jobs matches your open roles with qualified candidates, which means you can find the right person for your business fast. LinkedIn is an active community of professionals with more than 706 million members worldwide. Getting started is easier than ever with new features to help you find qualified candidates quickly. You can manage job posts and contact candidates from a single view, and now you can do this all from your mobile device. So when your business is ready to make that next hire, find the right person with LinkedIn Jobs. What's even better is you'll get $50 off your first job post. Just visit linkedin.com slash JJ. Again, that's linkedin.com slash JJ to get $50 off your first job post. Terms and conditions apply. Um, I, wa- I want to go back a, a little bit just uh, to talk about high school. And um, you committed to Wisconsin. You're from Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. You're from a suburb of, of, of Milwaukee. You, you committed to Wisconsin as a junior yeah. Um, and then you kind of killed even more so, uh, your junior year and then the, the AAU season going into your senior year and you, you decided to end up going to Kentucky. It was, it's not like Wisconsin has a, has a bad basketball program that, you know, around no. the time you had committed, they had made a final four run, I think in 15, um, yeah. lost to, lost to Duke. I want to say in the final. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> them, them blue devils. Yeah. And, uh, them Dukies. so what, what was, what was that? What, why, why did you make that decision to, to decommit and then go to Kentucky? What, what was it about Kentucky that you felt was a, was better for you? Um, I just wanted to play against the best, um, and be able to compete every day. And at the end of the, I knew my goal at the end of the day was to make the NBA. Like that's what I, my, I dreamt of. My dream wasn't to play in college. You know, I wanted to play in the NBA. So um, when Kentucky was like an option and I started to play really well, that door had opened up. I just felt like I couldn't pass it up because um, I kind of just wanted to like bet on myself and be able to go into Kentucky with, you know, other kids are my in my age and we all have an equal opportunity to go and you know earn minutes and you know at the end of the year the usually the best three players from Kentucky go to the NBA so that's that was my goal and that's what I wanted to do I think I think we talked about this with uh De'Aaron uh when he came on but maybe some other people as well but he talked about Cal and Kentucky and especially with guards and how basically like Cal was like, whether you're a freshman or whatever, if, if they pick you and they trust you, they're sort of like, you go, you're, it's your team. You go yeah. do your thing. <laughs> did you feel that right away? Or did you feel like you had to sort of like grow into that when you were there? Um, so we had, a, we had like a preseason tournament in the Bahamas. And coming in, I was only a four-star. I was the lowest rated recruit. So I really came off the bench in the Bahamas. And I was in the Bahamas, I was – averaging like 18 a game out, out of the four games and like coach Cal told me right after that he was like the, you're going to be taking all the shots this year so you know he kind of sensed that to me early that I was going to be taking a lot of shots and then more towards the to, to towards the end of the year he kind of gave me the keys and um you know just let me rock out who did who who was the big shot against that you hit in the tournament uh Houston Houston. In the Sweet 16. That's yeah. right. Houston, the Sweet 16. That was the first time I ever saw you play. That was actually the first time I ever heard of you. I got to be honest, I don't watch any <laughs> college basketball. I don't watch any yeah. college basketball. No, I don't. Ever since and, I made it to the NBA, I don't watch any uh, college yeah. basketball. I, I watch Duke occasionally, of course. But yeah. And so, anyways, you hit, you hit the shot, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. I, I, uh, did the bias thing and I'm like, oh, white shooter. Cool. He's got a white shooter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever. And then you declare for the draft, and I was like, that kid? That kid's a white <laughs> What? No. Yeah. <laughs> and then you come out and kill, of course. And I'm like, all right, I, I'm gonna I was wrong. But um <laughs> I, I, I do I do sense that you you carry with you that uh that doubt that people have about you. And mm. and I wonder if you also carry with you some of that animosity uh that you got after decommitting to, uh from Wisconsin and then committing to Kentucky. Because I would imagine then going and playing a, a an entire high school season in the state of Wisconsin, you yeah. probably dealt with a lot of shit that season. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, 
I mean, yeah, I definitely carry carry that with me always, like everywhere I go, even off the court. I feel like um, people just because we're like, we're white and we're in the NBA, so there's there's the odds are stacked against against us, I guess. And I feel like you know, just you got to carry that with you to be able to compete and actually um, to make it in the in the league. As you know, you've you've obviously made it and. Um, you gotta, you gotta be able to, you know, have a little dog in you to be able to, to be able to compete and stay in it. Tommy, have you ever seen one of Tyler's uh, high school mixtapes? Yeah, <laughs> I went on a, I watched some on YouTube today. Yeah, <laughs> the the ball is life mixtapes of Tyler Hero are phenomenal. <laughs> But the best part about all these mixtapes, though, <laughs> are just <laughs> the amount of shit talking that goes on. Like, ta- ta- talk to me about that a little bit. So you're, 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 you're clearly there's some some back and forth in these yeah. mixtapes. So it's not just you. It's not like me at Duke when I just went out on the court and talked shit for no reason. <laughs> like, people are sort of egging you on. <laughs> But yeah. there's there, like I I don't watch a lot of mixtapes, but I'm like these three and a half minutes are wildly entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were. I mean, those were those games were so fun. Like I remember, like my boys would text me in, during the JV game, like yo, the the whole gym sold out. Got people can't even get in, and they're all coming in Wisconsin gear because I just had decommitted. So everyone comes out in the Wisconsin gear, and that just I mean that just fires me up. Like I'm like, all right, let's get it. And then I just go out there and most times and uh, most nights I was putting up like 35, 45 and talking shit. That's, that's about it. <laughs> I love it. Um, I got to ask you a question. So in watching these tapes, this is just a little thing I picked up on. But did you did you alter your release point or the timing of your release on your shot from high school to the NBA? Because it seemed yeah. like in high school, and I, and I kind of did this too, you know, as as you move up in levels. But yeah. in high school, you would release it kind of at the top of your shot, whereas yeah. now it's a quicker release. It's almost yeah. Steph Curry like, where it's on the way up. Is that yeah. does that make sense? Am I accurate in that? Yeah, you are uh, dead accurate. Um, when I was in high school, I, I jumped more too. I elevated higher, uh, and in college too. Um, I elevated higher, but when I got to the Heat, the the Heat shooting coach actually kind of changed it up a little bit. Um, he said he noticed that in my shot and just thought that it would be better to shoot it going up on the way up. And it, it is; it's much easier. Uh, my range is extended, um, so yeah, I definitely had made that adjustment. That was a uh, the reason I had to make that adjustment. I'm, I'm sure part, I think maybe he didn't tell you this, but. When you're six four in high school and you let's say pull up against somebody, you're generally right. going to be guarded by like a five nine person, <laughs> right? So, so it really doesn't him. matter. You yeah, you don't even see him. You're just like I don't see you. I'm going to shoot right over you. And then you get to the league and it's like, oh, okay, this guy's six six with a six eleven wingspan. Right. So the release just naturally and and for me, I probably adjusted a little bit more gradually than than you did in just one season. But again, this speaks volumes to just you being right. able to pick up things uh so quickly <laughs> yeah i mean is that how you do it too you shoot it on the way up right more so now yeah i still yeah. if i have like a where i'm like let's say on a dead sprint on like a three-on-one fast break and i catch it on the wing you'll, I'll, you'll I'll elevate, be able, right? yeah i'll be able to elevate a little bit more and shoot it yeah. like at the top of the jump right but for the most part i mean unless i'm fading away with a ton of separation yeah i'm you know, I'm, yeah, I'm like I've seen it. you, I've seen you run into your right, and you'll kind of fade, right, fade into the corner, um, elevating high up, opposed to catching and shooting if you're like in a standstill position. Yeah, I, I actually hate shooting standstill shots. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that you don't yeah. really shoot that many, do you? No, well, I don't get that many either. I don't get that many, but no, it's well, no, it, it's well, no one leaves you. I, I feel like for me, like as a jump shooter. I get more. I just get more natural momentum if I'm on the move, and even off the right. dribble, um, where you can. And I noticed that you started doing this too with the like the throw and go. Yeah, you know yeah. where the chase action or whatever. I don't know what you guys call right. it, in Miami, but like so you have the ball at the top of the key. We talked about this Bradley Beal because I stole it from him, and you and you throw it to Bam, and then you just kind of cut off that, go get it from right. Bam, 
now you have momentum into your shot. Right. So whether you right. shoot off the DHO or now you're coming off one dribble, there's right. just more momentum. And I feel like that's an, that for me, that's just an easier shot than right. kind of waiting and not and being out of rhythm and, and shooting it that way. Yeah, I agree. Dun- Duncan does it so well. He'll throw it to Bam and just sprint right off it. And, and nine times out of ten, the, the, the dude who's guarding you falls asleep when you pass it and you just take off and, yeah. Well, the other thing with Bam that makes that so good is that his his keeps, right? Yeah. So he's, right. He's, he's so good when he has his live dribble as yeah. you're coming off or Jimmy's coming off or Duncan's coming off. It's yeah. just like the fake – and his guy will just take that step to be in yep. position to be in a drop, and Bam just goes, turns and goes. Right, right. Um, I'm pretty sure. I don't think. I don't think Spo was using that action in Miami until I busted their ass in the playoffs two years ago. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, I think, t- I think Spo took that shit from me. <laughs> he probably did. Like we're gonna use this. <laughs> this works. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Um, I want I want to ask you a few things just off the court stuff. Um, uh, when when did you when did you get into fashion? Because you I I don't know the exact stat on this, but I'm sure you know. I think you were on one of the all league fits teams this year. I don't know if it was first, second, or third team. You definitely were on the all league fits rookie of the year team. Um, you know you have you just have some legendary fits, man. I was not prepared. I was not prepared for that this season. <laughs> Um, when did, when did you get into fashion? Um, growing up, like I was obviously watching uh, the NBA and just like I always loved how guys would come to games. Like I would watch LeBron when he was in Miami, D Wade when they would walk walk into games or you know the press conference after the game. Just would always pay attention to what guys in the league would wear, and I was always intrigued into to fashion and and you know how what people would wear. So. Um, as I got older and more comfortable with myself, I was just really, I could take risk and um, not really care what people say and just wear what I want. I do feel like in a way, Miami is not just the perfect fit for you on the court, but also off the court. Yeah. Because some of the shit you wear to games, I don't know that you could wear that in Minnesota. No, you couldn't. Definitely couldn't. The all silk romper. I don't know what. I don't. The all silk <laughs> jumpsuit. I don't know what that was. That was sick, though. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> what about yeah. what about uh, the rapping? Rapping. Yeah. When did you get into that? I don't rap. I don't rap. Do you not rap? Mm-mm. So our fr- I'm gonna blow her up her spot. Cause she told us to ask our friend Taylor Rooks. Shout out to Taylor. Yeah. Literally said, <laughs> "Oh, Taylor ask told Ty- you I rap." Ask Taylor. Ask Tyler on the show about rapping. She and wasn't so we've supposed done to no, tell we, you that. So what's the so what's the deal? <laughs> um, no, nah, I, I stopped. I used to back in uh, pre bubble days. Pre bubble days. You know who else used to rap? Who's that? JJ. <laughs> 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 oh yeah you gotta send me some songs i gotta oh dude that. i will send you some songs i, I swear to god I, I so i had i had everything burnt on a cd you don't even know what cds are so these things are compact discs they're <laughs> no, yeah. just fuck with you. no i had everything burnt on a cd and uh, and i accidentally threw it away when i moved to new york three years oh, ago damn so i did i was like oh the songs are lost whatever they exist somewhere on a hard drive somewhere my boy has them from college right. whatever right so this dude hits me up on twitter like three months ago and he's he says um he he you know at jj reddick and he writes one of the lines and the line was <laughs> if you've never heard of me dial 911 it's a rap emergency <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like i'm like hold up so so i d i dm the guy i dm the guy i'm, I'm i ask him i said what what is going on here what do you how'd you hear that that song and he's like i went to duke you didn't you didn't know me but my 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 dorm room was down the hall from Curlew. That was our boy that uh, that recorded all the the raps and made some beats for us or whatever. Wow. So it was like Curlew had to do, had to like record in my room one night. So I ended up with like nine of your songs, and then so I hit up Curlew and the Curlew found the songs and he put them on a SoundCloud. So they exist. Wow. They're in the universe now. They're in the oh universe. Oh my god! And I know somewhere. The, the 10 rap songs that you recorded that you admitted to Taylor that you recorded, they exist somewhere. <laughs> They're in my phone. They're in my phone. I, can, I haven't released them yet. I don't think I can do that yet. 
<clears throat> how did you how did you get to know uh Jack Harlow? Is it just it just strictly from Kentucky or did you guys connect after Kentucky? Because he just came out in the last month or so with a song called Tyler Hero that yeah. has has been uh has been a hit. Uh wh- how did you guys connect? Um honestly just both being white, we were just like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> what's up bro and i was a fan of him and he was a fan of me and we kind of just uh we've been cool ever since but when i was at kentucky uh he's from louisville and um i was at a i had after i declared for the draft i went to the kentucky derby in louisville and this is before i even knew jack so i guess he had bumped into one of my guys and like we we had got face to face whatever ha- had happened and I met him like a couple months ago when I, or about a year ago when I met him and he was like, you don't even know this, but last year we had bumped into each other at the Kentucky Derby and I was almost about to fight your guy. I'm like, oh, I did not know that. It was just, it was crazy. Can you provide, can you just provide maybe one bar, one lyric? I know you got something memorized <laughs> here, man. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. I, I'll get back to you at the end of the show. <laughs> you don't want to hear my raps i'm telling you they're not they're nothing special I, I i think the people i think the people want to hear the raps here's here's okay so do the raps are they on uh are they on somebody's beats or are they on like an instrumental of like a real song uh somebody's beats yeah okay we go to the stu- we went to the studio in miami a couple of times and uh just made me and my people just made some songs a couple of songs all right. I hope your your phone is encrypted. There will be people <laughs> that try to break into your phone. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Please don't invade my phone, people. All right, before we get to the draft, I just want to ask you about year 2 and what year 2 looks like for you. Your mindset going in, you guys have a quick turnaround. I know your team goal obviously is to win a championship, but for yeah. you personally what is your mindset about what year two looks like as you as you take a step up in your career? Uh, yeah, I just I want to be able to take uh, take that next step. Um, I feel like I made a you know a great run in the playoffs, and I learned some things, and you know we had great experiences throughout the the playoffs. But uh, I just want to make make that next jump, take that next step. I don't know what it looks like, but uh, you know I want to I want to make a jump in some way. So. I have a basketball question for you. Um, who was the first guy when you got to the league uh, guarding you defensively that you were just like, this dude is a different beast. Like I'm in, I'm in the big leagues now. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's so, I haven't really, I wasn't that guy that got the, the assignment. You know, I wasn't the best player. I wasn't ever the best player on our team for, for their best player or their best defender to guard me. So I haven't really gotten that assignment. But, I mean, in the playoffs, like Jalen Brown, he's a great defender. You know, he's long, athletic, can really move laterally. So, um, you know, there's a bunch of guys in the league that are just, like J.J. said, 6'6 six, six with 7'3 wingspans and just athletic as hell. So, And they, they, they bother your shot. I can tell you that. They bother, they bother, especially you coming, especially coming this way. Like, you're right. Like, ah, you're right on my shot. Yeah. I don't like that. Do you have any good uh, uh, Pat Riley stories? Pat Riley, honestly, I when I first got drafted, I met him, but I haven't. Like, I just respect him so much. I just say hi to him when I see him. I say hi, but I haven't really had much of a much conversation with him. He hasn't. He hasn't made make, made you kiss the ring yet. Then, no, not yet. <laughs> Look, it's no secret our lives were always a bit chaotic, but nowadays the current climate is making things even crazier than ever. Everything has been affected. Then, on top of that, thrown a million pressing social issues and an expectation to be on twenty four seven, and it's easy to get worn down. Sometimes you just need a moment to turn off and hit reset. That's when you reach for Coors Light. It's made to chill. Exactly. When you crack open an ice cold Coors Light, things just seem to be a little better. It's mountain cold refreshment that's cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies, and it's the perfect beer to help you unwind. I've always felt like crisp is sort of the perfect word to describe Coors Light. 
It's just crisp. No matter where the day takes you, Coors Light will always be there to help you hit that reset button. So go grab a Coors Light or have it delivered straight to your door at get.coorslight.com. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Hey, Tommy, I'm pretty sure you do, but do you have a butthole? I do. I do. You do. Okay. Then this ad is actually for you. Oh, cool. It's hard to believe that when we go to the bathroom in this country, most of us wipe instead of wash. For years, bidets have been available, but hideously expensive, costing thousands of dollars. Well, the Hello Tushy Modern Bidet Attachment is here to democratize the blessings bestowed by bidets and offer clean buttholes to everyone. Wow. Well, Hello Tushy cleans your butt with a precise stream of fresh water for just $79. It's not much for a clean butthole. Seems like a deal. Yeah. It attaches uh, to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Goodbye toilet paper. So the Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself in a few months. That's a phenomenal statistic. I would love to cut my toilet paper use by 80%. Do you know what brand of toilet paper you use? No, I don't. Me neither. Never really but paid we, attention But to we're now going to use Hello Tushy, so we need 80% less of it. Yep. And the reason is because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. Even the best two-ply just can't cut it when it comes to a hands-free poop experience. Ditch paper products and uncomfortable chafing when you switch to the soothing, cleansing stream of water from a Hello Tushy bidet attachment. And every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Just join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every flush. Let me get this right. 60-day risk-free guarantee, 12-month warranty for a clean butt. Yes. Seems like a deal. It seems like a deal. Go to hellotushy.com slash three, T-H-R-E-E, to get 10% off. That's three spelled out. This is a special offer for our listeners. So go to hellotushy.com slash three for 10% off. Hellotushy.com slash three, 10% off for a clean butt. Let's do it. Uh, all right, let's get to the draft. Uh, Tommy, please explain the draft. Our category is uh, our favorite movie slash TV characters from the city of Miami in any capacity. Mine would definitely be Bad Boys, Will Smith. So Mike, Mike Lowry. Mike Lowry. But you got to yeah. be specific because we can pick like we can pick somebody else from that movie. Yes, we can pick somebody else from that movie. So Mike Lowry, Bad Boys, number one pick overall. Yeah. Okay. Great, great first pick. All right. I'm going uh, Willie Beeman any given Sunday. I knew you were going to take him early. I knew you <laughs> that would have been my number one overall. He's the best. I, I mean, I don't know how I don't take Tony Montana third. He has to be oh. the third pick. And I feel like I'm shocked that he made it to three. This feels a lot like when Jordan made it to three in 1980. <laughs> I, I disagree. I disagree. You'll see later. You'll see later why. So I have to, I have to, I have to name another person. You're going you to, gotta, but not oh, yet. Oh, yeah. You got to name a lot more people. You're going to have to name, you name four five. more. You have to name five total. Five total. All right. Cool. But cool, we'll, cool, help. Cool, we'll, cool. we'll help. If you don't have a list, we'll help cool. you. I, don't worry. Cool. <clears throat> I've got my draft board right here. <laughs> this All is right. the only thing JJ cares about on the show is this part of the draft. He's not very good at it, but he cares a lot about it. I, right. got, I got my draft board, too. All my right. scouts took some notes for me. Perfect. All right. So I'm gonna, my, my second pick, I'm picking Dexter Morgan from Dexter. Ugh. Great pick. Great pick. No. Mm. You ever watch that show, Tyler? Dexter? Yeah. No. Uh, is that, am, am I too young for that? I he's wouldn't a, start. He's one of the most iconic anti villains in television history, Tommy. You know that. You one of the worst one of the worst finales in the history of television was that show. Okay. But I wasn't picking shows, I was picking characters. Okay. All right. Second my second pick. This might be a little bit of a wild card. I'm going to throw it out there. <laughs> You're third picking a, a, a wild card in the second round? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, Mary from Something About Mary is my second pick. Mary Jensen off yep. the board. That's a good pick. I yep. don't think that's a wild card. That's a good okay. pick. Me? You took Tony Montana, right? Yeah. So I will take Jamie Foxx, Miami Vice. 
as uh, Ricardo Tubbs. Ricardo Tubbs. I love it. Great choice. And then I will take The Rock um, as Spencer Strasmore from Ballers. Solid. JJ was going to pick that for sure. I, he was very <laughs> high on def- my board. He's definitely going to pick that. <laughs> All right, my third. Yeah. Uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. You know what, Tommy? I got to <laughs> say, this is the first time in like four episodes where you haven't completely botched the draft. I'm ready, man. I'm you're ready. Off to a, you're off <laughs> to ready. a I'm great start. I'm winning this shit. I am winning you're this shit. You're off to a great start. You're off to a great start. Um. All right, I, I know I, I have a couple here that I really like, but I know they're going to be here later in the in, in the draft. So my next pick, I'm going to pick uh, Tony D'Amato, any given Sunday. The coach, yeah, Pac- played by Al Pacino. Really, just the last scene makes it. Okay, not a great but, character otherwise, but okay. the last scene, the last okay. scene makes it. And then um, I'm going to go Blanche from Golden Girls. I was thinking about taking that. Yeah, iconic television show. Gold Girls? Golden Girls. You have you ever watched it? I honestly haven't heard of any of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> Golden Girls is classic. Yeah. It was uh Golden- it was like really big when I was a yeah. very small child. You actually <laughs> should watch you should watch Golden Girls and then come back on and talk to us about it after you watch it. I think you're gonna okay. enjoy it. <laughs> um all right, I'm fourth. Yeah. See this is I'm not picking Tony Mon- I don't think Tony Montana is a bad pick, but I'm picking the skull from Scarface, who's the guy that kills Tony Montana at the end. That dude is a better character than Tony Montana because he wins. That guy that takes out Tony, the skull from Scarface, better than Tony. Mm. Okay. Okay. I think everybody will disagree with you on that, but okay. When people think of the movie Scarface, what do they think of? Skull? No. <laughs> Tony Montana, motherfucker. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, la- wait, you got, two, you got two more, Tyler. So this is your last two picks right here. All right. Um, I'm going with Back to Bad Boys. Uh, I, can do, I can do that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to go with uh, Martin Lawrence as Marcus. God, you got both. Marcus Burnett. I know. I was hoping that I would end up with that with my with my fifth pick. I was hoping to make it way back to me. That's a good choice. And then I'm going to go as Ice Cube and All About the Benjamins as Bookham. Ooh. Interesting. 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 <laughs> is, that a, is that a bad pick? For someone who did zero prep, you this was a fine draft. I think the Ice Cube pick is probably a little bit of a stretch, but everything else is good. Like yeah, this okay. is that's a solid five. Uh, you have a you have a great draft. You, have <laughs> you got a great two. Draft. You got you got the two the two bad boys in one draft. That's odd. that gets yeah. on us for screwing that up. Mm-hmm. I'm going uh uh Don Johnson Miami Vice my fifth. Don Johnson Miami Vice. So here's a question I have for you, Tommy. Yeah. Uh, just about Miami Vice in general. Yep. Um, did you enjoy the movie with Colin Farrell and Jamie Fox? Not really. Really. I like the show a lot better. Have you ever seen the show, Tyler? Mm-mm. It's from like the seventies or eighties. When is it from? I think it's eighties. In the eighties, it's like it's classic. It's like a you actually should watch it just to see like it's the most. I mean, isn't there literally like a Miami Vice uniform you guys wear? Yeah, yeah. Like it's like the it's the most Miami shit ever. Like you should watch it just for <laughs> what's, the, it, what's it called again? It's Miami Vice. It's the original Miami Vice. Oh, so the okay, Jamie okay. Foxx movie was based on this show that came okay. out in the eighties. And okay. it was Don yeah. Johnson and uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Philip Michael Thomas was the other guy that was in, in it with him. And it's just like it's just the most Miami thing you could possibly see. <laughs> I'm 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 looking at this draft board right now, and I feel like you were so good the first three rounds, Tommy. Whereas Tyler was consistently excellent up until the fifth round. <laughs> I don't love. I don't love a couple of my picks, but yep. I feel like this fifth pick will just seal the win for me. Well, you picked Dexter in the second round, which probably lost this oh for you, God. to be honest with you. Uh, De- <laughs> like Dexter is just a trash show, bro. It's the like I, I Tyler, have, we're, I have we're the saying, number one overall when Miami we're saying, character, listen, and that's on. Tony Montana. I have the number one overall player in the game. Who wins whoa, championships? Whoa, whoa. The greatest players. Whoa. Hold on one second. Hold on one okay. second. You don't have that. Both uh will smith and bad boys Thank and you. willie you. beeman are better than 
Tony Montana. All right, a, well, anyway. B, Tyler, when you watch these Miami Will shows. Smith is the best. Yes. When you watch these <laughs> Miami shows, watch Golden Girls, watch Miami Vice, do not watch Dexter because you're going to get mad at us because you're going to be like, why the fuck did you guys tell me to watch it? Just don't watch it. <laughs> All right. All right, pick it. Who's your fifth pick? Let's, My let's fifth see pick this. is Her- Horatio Kane from CSI Miami. <laughs> CSI Miami. <laughs> Played by David Caruso. Dude, CSI Miami is the best CSI David Caruso is the best lead in that series, and it's set Miami, and it's I, I it's a great fifth, it's great value in the fifth round. <laughs> okay, great value in the fifth okay. round. I love it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, all right, my guy Tyler, we appreciate the time. Come back soon. Best of luck this season. I think we're playing you guys in like two weeks in the preseason, so I'll see you then. See you. Yeah, uh, appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Later, bro. All right.